Mindful Life Practice Community. Okay, so let's start our practice in a seated shape. Close the eyes. Lengthen through the spine, relax the shoulders, rest the head on both shoulders. Take some deep breaths in and out. And as you breathe in and out, can you arrive in this moment? Letting go of whatever you walked into this practice with and just receiving this moment. And set an intention for this practice. So we've been moving along through the chakras. All throughout this season of yoga with MLPC and we're all the way in week four. So we're really opening through our heart chakra. So maybe your affirmation here is to practice with compassion towards yourself, practice ahimsa, practice nonviolence. Take another breath seated exactly where we are. And then we're gonna move a little bit with our breath. So let's inhale our arms up towards the sky. And then exhale the palms through the heart center. And then just do it a few more times. So inhale the arms all the way up. And then exhale the palms through the heart center. And then just do one more. Inhale the arms all the way up. And now let's land the right palm. Take the left arm all the way over towards the right. Breathe through the left side body. And then lift all the way up and we'll switch the opposite way. So landing the left palm, reaching the right arm over to the left. Let's take both arms all the way up and then just pivot, land the left palm on the right knee, land the right fingertips behind you, gaze over the right shoulder. And lift both arms all the way up, take a big breath in. And then we'll pivot the opposite way. So land the left palm, land the right knee on the left thigh, gaze over the left shoulder. And lift the arms all the way up, big breath in. 
Let's take our palms into our heart center. And then we're gonna come onto the hands and the knees and move through a few cat cows. So land your palms, land your knees, and then just lift through the heart and then curl the spine, tuck the chin. You just take in one more. And then come all the way back through center. Leave the left palm where it is. Lift the right arm up, big breath in. And then let's thread the right arm under, land it onto the cheek and the shoulder. And then maybe you lift the left arm up and weave it all the way around. And taking one more breath. And then lifting all the way around with the left palm, landing onto the right palm. And then we're going to go the opposite way. So take the left arm all the way up. And then thread the left arm under, landing onto the left cheek, landing onto the left shoulder. And then maybe weaving the arm around, hooking it here at the hip, breathing into the right side body. Now let's come all the way back through center with both palms. So coming all the way up onto both palms, finding your table. And then extend the left leg behind you, extend the right arm in front of you, take a breath in. And we're gonna tap elbow to meet the knee and we'll do it a few times. And just three more, two more. Good, and then the last one, lift the arm, lift the leg. Perhaps if you want to, you might kick the foot back, open through the heart, take a few breaths like that. Okay, and then just release the right hand, release the left foot. Land the right palm, we're gonna take the right toes off the side of the mat, lift the left arm up, just breathe into our body here. And then land the left foot, lift all the way up, land the left palm, reverse the warrior. So you're taking the right arm over towards the left. And then we'll come all the way around back on both palms, come all the way back into a table. Just let your spine come into neutral. Take a few breaths in and out. And then we're gonna do exactly the same on the opposite side. So leave your left knee, leave your right palm, lift your left arm, lift your right leg, try and lengthen out. And then we're gonna tap elbow to meet the knee a few times. All right, you guys look great. Moving slowly and mindfully, but knowing that if you wobble, it is totally fine. You're still a good person. Okay, just doing one more. Nice, and then reach back with your arm. See if you can grab a hold of the ankle, open through the heart a little bit.
good. And now we're going to release the foot, release the hand, land the right palm, take your right toes off the side of the mat, and lift your left arm all the way up. I think, this, I think I'm on the right side. If I'm on the wrong side, <laughs> just do the side that you're on, landing the back foot, landing the right palm, lifting all the way around. And then come all the way around back with both palms. We're going to tuck the toes, lift all the way up and back, find your down dog. So I've been thinking a lot lately about just kind of decisions for my, the next part of my journey of my life. And I think sometimes we as human beings get really attached. You know, we want things to stay the same. And sometimes it's our attachment to things that causes the problem more than the things themselves. Let's lift our right leg all the way up towards the sky for a three-legged dog. And then you're going to draw the right knee in, step the right foot between the palms, by rocking back and forth. Awesome, you've got it. And then eventually land your left knee onto the mat and then lift the arms up. And then we're going to flow with our breath. So inhaling arms up and then exhaling the palms forward and reaching back. So anyway, I've been sharing a lot about um, how I really wanted to stay in Abu Dhabi. I thought that this was my home. I wanted to do events here. I've been setting up this plan to stay here. And yet everything is coming up against me, right? I started this company six months ago and I still don't have a proper visa. Every time I've been trying to run an event, things fall through. Take one more, lift our arms up. And then we're just going to reach our palms forward. We're going to walk our fingertips back and linger over the extended right leg. So I've been thinking a lot about, um, I have a favorite Instagram yoga teacher. Her name is Rachel Brayton. She's called Yoga Girl on Instagram. And um, She has been in Aruba for like the past 10 years, however long. And all of these things have been happening around Aruba lately, like, you know, having a falling out because of something she said on her podcast and then getting old in, in their home and having to like do this deep cleanse of their home and, um, she traveled to visit her family in Sweden and realized that that was where she meant to be. And so decided to move her family there after like 10 years. And it's funny because sometimes I think we hold on to places until, or things or people or jobs or whatever, until the universe starts kind of nudging us in the other direction and sends us signs that it's time to let go. Take one more breath. And then walk your hands forward. Good, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee, reach the right arm all the way up. And then let's explore coming into a side plank and just seeing how it feels to be in that side plank with the arm extended for five, for four, for three, for two. And then on one, land the right palm. Nice, and then just move through a vinyasa flow. And we're gonna do the opposite side. Next. Thinking a lot about letting go and what that would look like. Okay, 
Okay, if you're ready to go the opposite side, we're gonna take the left leg all the way up for three-legged dog. Good, you've got it. And then draw your left knee in, step the foot between the palms. You can rock forward and back. Nice. I love that Laura's in her pajamas. <laughs> Land the back knee and then lift the arms up. Good, and then just flow with the breath. So inhaling arms up. Good, and then exhaling, taking the palms forward. You got it. Laura used to have a job where she got up at like 4 a.m. So I think she has permission to be in her pajamas at 10 a.m. <laughs> the beautiful thing about this virtual community is that, you know, if I decide to move on with my life, if I decide to move on from Abu Dhabi, it doesn't mean that I'm losing any of my connections or my community. Right. And I think that was one of the hardest parts of letting go throughout my life was leaving places and moving on and losing the people and the connections and the friends. The nice thing about the MLPC is knowing I'll always have that. Good. Let's take the arms up one more time. Nice. And then we're going to walk our hands forward again, frame the foot. And then lengthen that left leg, walk the fingertips back and just see how it feels in your left calf, your left hamstring today. All right, take another breath. Nice, and then walk your hands forward, frame your foot, anchor through your right palm, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee. Excellent, lift the left arm up, you got it. And then just come all the way around to that side plank. Good, scooping the arm under and up for a few breaths. Nice, and then just land that left palm on the mat, come into a plank, good. And we're gonna come all the way down onto the navel. So just come all the way down and land on the belly. Excellent, good. Reach the arms alongside the hips. Nice, and now we're gonna allow our pelvis to be heavy and our belly to be light and just lift the upper body and lift the legs. Good, so you're pointing through the toes, nice. Good, and look, keep your gaze down towards the mat, yeah. Gaze down, yeah, exactly. Because we have this tendency to want to look up and see what's going on, but we're actually really kind of throwing our neck a little bit further than it needs to go. Excellent. Good job, you guys look great. For three, okay, two, and then one landed cheek and just rest. Excellent. Now try interlacing the palms behind the uh, sacrum. Good. And then just lifting the interlaced palms, lifting the toes. Yeah, awesome. Keeping your gaze low again. Good thing about me doing PT in the mornings that then I don't feel guilty taking a break and observing you guys. <laughs> And as a teacher, it's really nice to observe because then we can see what our students are doing. Okay, take one more breath and then lower down, rest a cheek. Okay, take deep breaths in and out. And then I'll give you one more opportunity to do either the first one or the second one, or you might kick your heels back, grab hold of the ankles. Excellent, and then just lift your heart into what's called a bow pose. 
Go ahead. Can you draw your toes back away so that you're almost like drawing your toes towards your knees? Excellent. Yeah, good. So toes are, everyone's like, what are the, what am I doing with my feet? <laughs> so you're, you're, there's two things you can do with your feet. You can point the toes or you can flex the toes and you want to be flexing the feet. Yeah, there you go. You got it. Excellent. Good. Women's pose, feet are flexed. Generally in our back bends, our feet are flexed. Excellent. Take one more breath. And then just lower down, rest the cheek. And I'll give you a fun fact. Scientifically, the word is called plantar flexion. And then pointing the toes is called dorsiflexion. But I'm not going to use those words because I think it will confuse you more than anything. <laughs> but you'll learn them on my yoga teacher training. <laughs> All right, bend through the knees, lift the feet up towards the sky. And then just windshield wipe the feet from side to side. Good. Another thing that I have attachment to is music. I'm really attached to my playlists while I do yoga. Let's release our feet back down. Good. And then plant through the palms underneath the shoulders, lift all the way up, come to your table. You got it. And then all the way back to your down dog. So I get really attached to the music I'm playing, really get attached to the playlist. And I now have, I'm at this point in my, um, my spirituality where I don't think that anything happens without a reason. And I think that everything has an intention and the universe kind of has our back. And so if my AirPods and my music are not working, then it means that I need to let go of this attachment to music and, and practice in silence and enjoy the silence and see what I learn from, from that. All right, if you're ready to carry on with the journey, we're gonna lift our right leg up towards the sky, three-legged dog. Good work. And now draw your right knee all the way in. Step the right foot between the palms. Go ahead, lift all the way up. So take a big inhale, lift up. Excellent. And then open up to a warrior two. So take your right palm forward and your left arm back. Good. You guys look great. So alignment for this pose, you want your left heel intersecting with your right arch, sorry, opposite way. You want your right heel intersecting with your left arch. So your front heel, if you look down at it and you trace the line along the mat, they're in one line, good. Yep, excellent. And then your right knee is stacking above your right ankle. And then take a moment, just gaze over your right shoulder. Gaze over the left shoulder. See that you're making one long line with your arms. And then just flow with your breath. So inhaling, reversing. Good. Exhaling the elbow to the knee. So I'm just doing a few more. And lift all the way up, lengthen the right leg, reach the right arm forward, lock the right arm alongside the right calf, lift the left arm up from your tree canasana. And now just shift weight onto the right foot and the right fingertips, finding yourself in your half moon, just pressing through the big toe, pressing through the fingertips, holding here for three. For two. And then on one, come all the way up to stand, land your left foot alongside your right, and then just place the palms into heart center.
how would I be lighter if I let go? Inhale, arms up towards the sky, look up. Exhale, fold. Take the inhale, halfway lift. And then exhale to lower. Let's do one more. So land the palms, step back. Perhaps you move through a vinyasa flow. Excellent. And then let's take a little breather between sides. Let's land our knees onto the mat and just rest our forehead and come into a child's pose. Good, take a little break, resting your forehead, resting your arms. Tuning into this moment and seeing what your body needs. And if it needs to stay in this child's pose, then know that you can stay here. It's all good. Take one more breath in your child's pose. And then if you do want to journey to the opposite side, what we're going to do is lift up to our tabletop. Good. Slowly move back to the down dog. And then we're going to take it the opposite way. So lift your left leg all the way up. Good. Three-legged dog. Excellent, now draw the left knee in. Go ahead, step the left foot between the palms. Nice, and then lift up. And then open up to a warrior two. So your left arm is forward, your right arm is back. Nice, and then move with your breath. So reversing the warrior. Go ahead, bringing your elbow to the knee. And just do this a few more times. Just doing one more. And then eventually you're just gonna lift up, lengthen the left leg, shorten your stance a little bit, reach the left arm all the way forward, clock the left arm alongside the left calf, lift the right arm up, find your triangle. And then you might shift weight onto the left foot, left fingertips, find your half moon, take five breaths. Good. 
And then come all the way up to stand, landing both feet, press the palms and together in heart center, find stillness for a moment. Now let's explore leaving our left foot, opening the right knee to the side, planting the right foot on the inside of the ankle or the shin, or maybe on the thigh. And then just pressing the palms together at the heart center. Sitting on the foot, taking a few breaths. And then move the opposite way. So land the right foot, open the left knee to the side, plant the left foot on the inside of the ankle, the shin. Maybe on the thigh and just take the palms together, take a few breaths in and out. Right, let's land the left foot. Come all the way to stand at the front of the mat. Take the inhale, lift the arms up towards the sky. Take the exhale, fold. Take one inhale, halfway lift. One exhale to lower, plant the palms, step all the way back to a down dog. And then from the down dog, let's land the knees onto the mat. We're going to take one more back bend if you're open to just exploring it to see how it goes. So you're going to come up onto the knees, plant the palms onto the sacrum, shift the hips forward, keep the chin tucked, and then maybe reach one fingertip back and then the other. Exploring, this is called camel pose, just see how it feels. You want to have your hips forward. So if you're leaning back like this, it's not quite the pose. You want to shift your hips forward so that you're opening through the heart. And now let's lift all the way up, take the palms onto the hips, untuck the toes. And then just shift the hips back and rest the forehead again. All right, finding your child's pose one more time. And then from the child's pose, let's lift all the way up. Send your feet to the side. I forgot to mention at the start of the class, I want to do a little bit of hamstring opening. So if you have something you can hook your foot around, like a strap or a resistance band or a t-shirt or anything, doesn't really matter what it is. What we're going to do is just come all the way down and then lengthen through the right leg. Put the strap around the right foot, extend the left leg long. And then breathe through the back of the right leg. So Rachel Brayton, who is yoga girl, who I loved, she wrote a book called To Love and Let Go. She says, to love and let go. 
It is the single and the most important lesson that we will learn in this lifetime. And take a few more breaths exactly as you are. And Matt is leaving for work by Matt with authority. <laughs> and then just open your right leg all the way towards the right. Keep your left palm onto your left hip. And then let's take the right leg, and take it all the way up towards the sky, and then transition it over to the left. Just get an IT man stretch. Ease over the right shoulder. Lift the leg all the way up and let's do it one more time. So we're gonna release the right leg and then switch the opposite way. So hook the strap around the left foot and just breathe into the left calf, the left hamstring. Just take three more breaths. Open your left leg to the side.
And then let's take the left leg all the way up. We're gonna take the right palm around the strap and then just take the left leg all the way to the right and gaze over the left shoulder. Actually, just taking one more breath where you are. And then can you take the leg all the way up? And then just stretch all the way back out into your final resting pose. You're going to extend both legs, plug through the shoulders, flip the palms face up. It doesn't interest me what you do for a living. I want to know what you ate for. And if you dare to dream of meeting your heart's longing. It doesn't interest me how old you are. I want to know if you will risk looking like a fool for love, for your dream, for the adventure of being alive. It doesn't interest me what planets are squaring your moon. I want to know if you have touched the center of your own sorrow. If you have been opened by life's betrayals or have become shriveled and closed from fear of further pain. I want to know if you can sit with pain, mine or your own, without moving to hide it or fade it or fix it. I want to know if you can be with joy, mine or your own. If you can dance with wildness and let the ecstasy fill you to the tips of your fingers and toes. Without cautioning us to be careful, be realistic to remember the limitations of being human. It doesn't interest me if the story you are telling me is true. I want to know if you can disappoint another to be true to yourself. If you can bear the accusation of betrayal and not betray your own soul. I want to know if you can be faithless and therefore be trustworthy. I want to know if you can see beauty even when it's not pretty every day. And if you can source your own life from its presence. I want to know if you can live with failure, yours and mine, and still stand on the edge of a lake and shout to the sliver of the moon, yes. It doesn't interest me to know where you live or how much money you have. I want to know if you can get up after the night of grief and despair, weary and bruised to the bone, and do what needs to be done for the children. It doesn't interest me who you are, how you came to be here. I want to know if you will stand in the center of the fire with me and not shrink back. It doesn't interest me where or what or with whom you have studied. I want to know what sustains you from the inside when all else fails away. I want to know if you can be alone with yourself and if you truly like the company you keep in the empty moments.
Nice, sweet stretch from fingers all the way through toes. Curling your knees into your chest, giving your body a sweet little hug. And then making your way up to a seated shape with the palms at the heart center. So we're gonna close with an intention. It is an ancient intention, it's the original intention. It's been passed from heart to heart through thousands of years. And it's that our practice remains steady and our efforts remain continuous and our yoga helps and heals and it serves and it benefits all humans everywhere, all beings everywhere, really. May all beings be safe, be happy, be healthy, be free. May the thoughts and the actions of each of our lives contribute towards this. So let's finish with an OM and we're going to inhale and exhale. Inhale through to make an OM. So taking a large breath in. Deep breath out. Good big breath in. Ooh. Thank you so much, yogis, for being here this morning, for sharing the space and the practice. I'm so grateful for each one of you. The light in me, it sees and it honors the light in you. Thank you, yogis.